His rebooting isn't too too slow. Let's see if uh, if you guys are back. So yeah, unfortunately, I don't think it's RenderDoc's fault. I think it's just my driver for my video card that there's things that get corrupted. I don't know, some combination of OBS uh, with RenderDoc. Hey guys, you guys are back. Thanks for uh, <laughs> thanks for waiting for the reboot there. All right. So yeah, I don't I don't really know why um, why it is that when I maximize my screen I, it, it's it's slower to render I wonder if I could figure it out maybe if we compare if we could, like if we take um, a profile I wonder if make, maybe taking a profile will help us figure out I was hoping that render doc would would tell me but it doesn't seem to to help in any way. Okay. So uh, let's see. Like basically what we're trying to see is why is it that when we run the emulator this way, Get, get like 100 FPS and then I run it this way and then it drops to like 60 FPS. So what's going on there? Let's try this. We'll do a performance profile. Performance wizard. We'll do some CPU sampling. You say you never had that problem? Yeah, I mean, I don't think I've had either. But I don't know. Okay, and then I'm going to go wide and just keep I'm I'm resetting because I want it to kind of stay on this screen here. Let's see what that gives us. Hey, Elif Gamer, <laughs> thanks for coming back. Yeah, I just rebooted my machine. I, I like I was saying, I think there's a problem probably with my driver, something that render doc is querying through the driver that, that kind of messes up the render state. So here it's, I mean, okay, the, the frame rate difference was not very large. So it's gonna be a bit hard, I think, to see. Notice this even on my laptop, so it's definitely something. It's not like specific to my computer. I'm trying to think about how I'm gonna look at this. I don't know 
I'm gonna see this. It's slow in debug. Why, why are you in debug, gamer? I pretty much stopped working in debug. It's just... It's too slow for me. I had a crash. I just use my uh, optimize on, optimize off macros there, the pragma optimize macros here, or the uh, preprocessor, uh, whatever you call them there, the, uh, what do you call these, these pragmas again? Anyway, the name escapes me, but I use these now in release, and I, so if you know kind of the function, that's a good question, Basil Burrito. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, I... Uh, yeah, let's try that. I also wonder if it's imgui. Let me see if I like... Can I just not do the imgui stuff? Let's try that. Yeah, so, so just, just so you see it again. Basically, it's pragma optimize, quote, quote, comma, off, and pragma optimize, quote, quote, on. You could find this on the web pretty easily. And I just wrap those around my functions. That's like a function scoping thing. So um, I think you can put it at the top and at the bottom as well. I think it's going to work for your whole file. Like it, all the functions in between the two are going to be optimized. Uh, we'll have to op optimizations disabled, but it allows you to keep optimizations for everything else. Uh, okay, so I've got I've got MGUI code that's not happy with that, eh? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, actually, actually, Lisp Gamer, we'll talk about it off screen, but. Um, I'll tell you something about your code base that's super useful and related to this. Let me try just not calling my render scene and just to see what happens. Oh, I know you didn't write it, but uh, there's a, actually there's a very cool feature. So you see, I'm at like seven, eight hundred, eight hundred thirty. Then I come here, and then it drops to like five hundred FPS. And that's pretty dramatic, right? <laughs> it must be this like swap window thing. It's a GL swap window, and the window gets larger, but. What is it doing? Nah, I don't have the code. Isn't it just doing GL swap? I think it would be that. I mean, it makes sense, right? What if I just don't swap? What does it look like? Why? Because when we go full screen, we don't do swapping in the same way.
Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is a swap. So, and when you mean the window manager, you mean like the Windows window manager? Yeah, so here, here when I run my render code, we're, we're hovering at around 135. And if I go down here, oh no, sorry, that's too small. I, I'm, I'm making a difference when I go too small. Yeah, there we go, 135. And still 135. So definitely, it's the it's the swap. You're wondering if SDL gets. I'm also wondering about that. I, I think I have the so I can go look at the source for SDLs. I have it on my my machine here. Let me just go take a quick look. If we go into where would I keep that stuff? Uh, it would be in PC package SDL here. Static. Uh, oh, is this already pre-compiled? It might be. Oh, build trees. Here we go. Okay, here's the source. Do I have PDBs for this? Anyway, whatever. So we want to look at um gl swap window It would be fine. It would be nice to be able to step into it. I don't know if I have the PDBs. Packages. I mean, I am static. Let's see, lib. No PDBs here, but I might have them because I'm using static release. No? Built without PDBs? That sucks. Uh, I didn't realize I was looking at such a high level. I meant to look in. Okay, let's try and build trees. These are not the PDBs for it, are they? So some of these have PDBs, but it looks like SDL, I don't have them. That's, that's, I wonder if that's just an option. Let me see, VC package. 
PC PKG. Oops. PKG uh, PDB. We believe having the ability to debug is vital, but therefore we always want to include PDBs for both release and debug. VC package copy PDBs helps you with that by automatically figuring out which PDBs correspond to the DLL. So if you're not getting PDBs, there might be a bug in the port file. So it looks like it went straight to WinGL swap window and it did find the source. So I, 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 it had the PDB all along, so it, it knew about it. That's good. Um, all right, so this gets the HDC and then it just calls swap buffers. That's it. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But I mean, I, I kind of like it, <laughs> you know? Like if you were to go full screen, I mean, I guess that's what Lisp Gamer is saying is if you want to support full screen, it's going to be different. Um, but yeah. Operation of swap buffer depends on the driver you're using. Very old drivers did do, did do a GL finish when swap buffers was called, but in order to increase pipeline performance, most modern drivers put the swap buffers command in the command queue and return immediately. They don't do an implicit GL finish. Some drivers then let you continue writing to the command queue and only back to that. Other drivers will block on the next open GL call. Open gel command sent after swap buffers if the swap is not completed yet. So that's interesting. I wonder if it's so. So that that could explain it. That basically, I mean, I have a pretty high frame rate, and maybe what all that's happening is we're blocking on the, the following swap window. But I mean, it, that doesn't make any sense because it's related to how large it is, right? Now that's not very high. The frame rate, no. So that doesn't make any sense. That's something else.
Um, VSync. I don't even think I enabled VSync. I'd have to enable it. Let's see. I could do that, eh? Flags, SDL, renderer, present, VSync, is it? Do I create a renderer? I guess I do. No, I create a. I don't create a win render. I create a window. Maybe it's here. Part of create window. Congrats, Lisp gamer. What if I'm not calling create renderer? I'm doing SDL create context. SDL uh, GL set swap interval. So it's the first one here. Should I, I should have clicked. I'm feeling lucky. For swap tearing, eh? Okay. Let's mess with this a bit. Is is zero the default? Oh, that's interesting. Okay, let's try one. Yeah, I just read that. It says some systems may allow it. That's kind of cool. Seems my frame rates actually dropped to around 30. 28, okay. And it's, now it's about the same. So why am I at 30 FPS here? I guess I'm I'm missing some uh, the VSync window. I know why I'm syncing at 30. But it is interesting though. So I don't know why it's 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 at 30, but one thing's for sure, with VSync on, it it remains around the same frame rate regardless of how how large this is. That's really interesting. But it's curious that I'm hitting 30 FPS. Just wanna see if minus one makes any difference. But that was a good idea, Basil Burrito. The swap tearing actually gives me even lower frame rate. So interesting. And I guess zero is what I had before. Where I'm getting like a hundred 
88, 100, 200 FPS. So V-Sync brings me down to 30, that's very odd. Something to look into, I guess. Okay, I'm gonna move this down because this is pretty much done now. The resolution independent stuff. Yeah, I can't do this tri triangle strip thing, but I wanted to make a note here Look into why I'm getting 30 FPS v-sync When v-sync is enabled No, I mean, it's not a coincidence, right? But what usually what that means is like, you know, with VSync, if you miss the 60 FPS window, um, it'll drop to 30, right? So to me, what it would imply is that that's what's happening. I'm not hitting the 16.67 uh, millisecond window. But the thing is, without VSync, I have a much higher frame rate. So I don't quite understand how, you know, where am I, where am I messing this up? I don't have any art artificial weights or anything like that. Because you know that's that's the thing with VSync, right? So the idea is to avoid tearing, right? So I don't know if I can draw it, but the idea is to get six, 60 FPS. You have this these 16.67 millisecond windows, you know, and uh, wait, I'm not gonna get like this. And so what happens is that let's say, you know, you start your frame and this is you're doing your computation and somehow you miss, you don't, you don't render until here, right? Well, when that happens, that means that in order to keep you synced, you've already missed this window. So it's going to wait until this here. Right, and if that happens, you know, multiple times, whoops. Wow, okay. Notepad sucks. <laughs> then you get this, which is actually 30, right? Well, yeah, it, it will do as many as it can, right? But if, if my emulator somehow is running slower and keeps missing the 16.67 millisecond window, it's gonna have to wait till the next sync, right? But it's, it's weird, it doesn't make that much sense. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> If you play in borderless, borderless window with game locked using Riva Tuner, it will use Windows built-in double buffering to help combat the tearing. There's not much else you can do if enabling at the driver level doesn't help. So yeah, this just may be my, my setup. I have a really old video card. Crap is all horrible. <laughs> oh, 
World 25 wants to know what video card I have. Uh, yeah, so this is where you'll see how old my system is. Hold on a sec. Let me get the actual specs for that. Okay, so let's see, what am I running here? It's an, it's an ATI AMD Radeon HT5670, which is pretty crap. And I have this Radeon settings thing, and I probably have a place in here to mess around with VSync. Yeah, it's super old. <laughs> I've said this before, like because of this old video card, I don't even have a... Yeah. <laughs> I totally need to get myself a new video card, but when I look at the market right now, I just don't feel like buying one, you know? But I would like to get something that actually does uh, hardware... Uh, <clears throat> hardware, uh, what's it called? Transcoding there for, uh, for the video stream. So when I stream on OBS now, it actually takes up like 40% of my CPU. Yeah, thanks, exactly. Thanks to the miners, it fucked up the whole uh, market. I'm just wondering if I have something, some setup somewhere. Yeah, exactly so expensive and I mean I could go for like a second rate card you know but I don't know you know it feels kind of like I don't feel like doing that so here's the v-sync OpenGL triple buffering. Maybe I could try that, just for fun. This one here has on, always off, off unless application specifies. Yeah, let's, let's try the triple buffering, I'm just curious to see what happens. Yeah, see, the GTX 1050 is one of the cards I was thinking about maybe getting. You got it for a good price, 130 That's pretty good. That's pretty awesome, actually. Yeah, so see, I'm still at 30 FPS here. Or something like it. So the triple buffering for OpenGL didn't do anything. <laughs> is that like a million? What is that? I'm guessing if I don't do this, eleven milliseconds. All right, is that good for you? Let's see if I turn force on. Vsync if it makes a difference from the the options there. Yeah, it seems to have the exact same effect, so. Anyway, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. I think I'm gonna focus on something else and we'll go we'll get back to this at some point.
colors floats and has to be converted to bytes. So yeah, I was thinking about doing this is send index buffer to reduce vertex bandwidth fur further. I had this other idea too for uh, making things faster. So right now what I do is I produce just a, a buffer of lines. However, I did the, I did this optimization, right, where I'm able to, to um, Where I build my, when I build my vector of lines, I, I just know I can like I coalesce the little bits of lines and make one line, um, and then the next line, like I I don't I don't um, what's, what am I trying to say here? Yeah, so I was thinking about how like if I knew that the lines were connected, so if instead of passing in just a long array of lines, I was to to pass say an array of line strips, where you know each line strip is just a set of lines, I could optimize how I'm sending the line information. Um, I could actually do, do uh, basically triangle strips for the line strips. And that would definitely be an optimization. I'd be sending less, uh, for, at least for connected lines. Now, I don't know how many lines are actually connected on the vec when we're playing a Vectrex game. It really depends on the game. But I mean, I get some savings. I'm just not sure how many. Like here, there's not that many lines that are connected. Um, I don't, I, I make a, I have to check. I make like some six or seven draw calls. But my problem right now is that, is that I send quite a lot of, uh, of lines Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll risk again and I'll run render doc one more time. I had a profile, didn't I have a profile? No? Oh, here. Oh, I guess I didn't save it here. Just save this. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. I'm not. I'm not going to pay attention to the color pass because that's that's mainly there for. Um, and that's actually when I, if I click here, I might actually mess up my machine again. But um, effectively, that's where. Uh, sorry, that's where the imgui stuff is handled. I definitely can reduce my draw calls. I, I was thinking about how right now I, I kind of double the work that I'm doing for for the glow pass. And I was thinking about how I'm going to do that differently. I wanna, what, I, what I want to do 
is maybe forget applying glow to a different thickness of line because that's what I'm doing right now um, and instead give me a second here Um, yeah, so I was gonna say is I'm gonna just combine my my glow in, into the line render shader. If I can, I have to think about that, or maybe find another way to do this. Because right now I'm like totally duplicating uh, my draw and my darken for glow here. So I do like another draw and another darken with thicker lines. And then here I, I do the the uh, the glow stuff. And that's actually two two different glow passes here. So yeah, that's it's pretty slow, and I, I gotta come up with something a bit better. And then this this also is kind of a waste, where I do like a scaling to this texture. I scale this down into a texture that has the same size as the um, as the final texture for the screen, and I don't need to do that. I can just that that's the thing. I can just go back to rent. I can go to rendering directly to the back buffer. Um, and the reason I did this is because I wanted to combine this texture with the with the overlay texture, and in my fragment shader do the the combining there with um, with the alpha. But I was thinking like that's kind of slow. And what I can do instead is I can just render this to the back buffer, and then render the other one with transparency to the back buffer, and that would be much faster. So I could. I'll probably like save myself two draw calls there, two or three even. So that's, you know, that's part of it. And if I do a, a performance profile again, just to take a look here. Like you know, for for an application that that's not, that's um, not doing so much at the rendering level, I'm surprised at how slow it runs. You know what I mean? Like I feel it should run a lot faster. So you see here I'm spending quite a bit of time in my render scene and see a, a sizable chunk of it is inside this, this draw call and draw vectors. So one, one of the things is it looks like this here, set frame buffer texture, takes a bit of time, 20, 30, set viewport texture, why, I don't even know why it'll show up, quite a few samples in there. But then the big one is here, draw vertices. And, you know, this code, VA1, why is it just this one? Anyway. So, uh, yeah, I'm just kind of, kind of wondering why it shows here. Is it because it's the same call, same function called twice? I guess so, right? But that's it, spending most of its time in this draw vertices lambda function here. Um, part of it is this bind this buffer gel buffer data where I'm sending my my vertices. So I figure, you know, if this is smaller, I send less data, so that's good. And then of course it's a draw call, which is about say like three times that that cost. 
again, I assume if the vertex buffer is smaller, this will go faster. I do build vertex buffers. Oh yes, I know why the second call doesn't do anything, because right now the second call has an empty array. Yeah, this is my function that was written for supporting two different modes, and that was because in my line mode, like my GL lines mode, I would send uh, triangles and um, and points, so I do GL, GL triangles and GL points, or no, GL lines and GL points, but now I'm just doing GL triangles for everything. So. Uh, the second mode is basically useless. This is an empty array and this is useless. So I'm going to remove all that code uh, fairly soon because I don't really need it, the gel line stuff, but anyway. Well, maybe you'd be surprised <laughs> that this stuff can be slow. It is slow for me anyway. There's the ATI OGL. Like, I can't really dig into this. I even tried to get symbols for... Uh, for my for my drivers there because you know how like ATI and Nvidia now provide drivers for uh, sorry PDBs for a lot of their drivers so that at least you can see you don't get the source code but at least you can see something in the, interesting in the call stack um, I, I don't get any, anything interesting I don't I can't get symbols for this specific driver that I have it's too old so. But yeah just looking at this you know it just feels like if I can reduce the size of my vertex uh, arrays here, my vertex, my uh, buffers here, I can probably speed it up a little bit. And I, anyway, all I'm saying here is, I think sending sending the vertices and the indices would just be better because I'm repeating myself for my vertices. You know, for the triangles, um, basically for every line. I send six vertices and instead I would send four so that would reduce like you know two out of six so it's about th it's 33 percent in terms of vertices and instead I would send I would replace that with an index buffer so less vertices to send so 30 say 30 percent less vertices to send I'd also have to send a vertex uh, an index buffer but I think that you know drivers and, and GPUs are really optimized for for processing with index buffers. So I suspect that it would be, you know, the overhead of the index buffer will not surpass the overhead of sending the the vertices, like the overhead saved from sending less vertices, if that makes sense. Um, so it's something to try anyway. So there's that, and what else was I thinking? Oh yeah, the line strips thing. Yeah, that, this, this is the, maybe we can make glow render cheaper. So definitely my glow is, it, it adds quite a bit. You know, so if I disable glow, you can see the frame rate uh, changed pretty dramatically. So let's say I'm at 84 here, and I just disable the blur. We jump to 145, 148, put it back, back to 83, 84. So, and, and, and it's not surprising because if you look down here, when we enable, enable blur, what I end up doing is, there's a lot of stuff that I'm doing here that's a waste. Um, so I create this quad vertex array twice, and the reason why it's twice is because I allow for a, set, a different line width, and that's really the crux of the thing, is um, by providing a different line width for the glow, 
I have to recreate my... Uh, well, I, I guess I don't really have to. I could probably optimize this now, now that I think about it. I don't really need to create it from scratch. I could totally scale instead the original. The, or I can pass the scale. You know what I should do is pass the scale down to the shader. At worst, if I have to keep this separate, I can keep like, my one... Like, let's say this is expensive. I, I'd have to take a look. I don't know how expensive this is, but... Uh, not this, sorry. Create quad vertex array. So say this is taking time. We could save this dual call um, and, and actually pass the scale down to the to the shader. Could we? Not sure. Probably. I have to think about it. And I'm also doing it here. Another draw, like this is a another draw call for drawing those to the this other texture I also have to darken it because I because I have this this idea of darkening the lines to the textures and I want to apply glow um, in a uniform way I I have to re redo the same thing and that's something I'm wondering about if I, I at the time it made sense to me that I had to redo this but I'm not sure anymore if I have to do that do I draw one large quad Um, for these, yes. For like the darkened texture pass, I do. Because I have now, so basically the idea is I draw all my lines to, let's 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 start here. So I create this big uh, vector of vertex data, right? Which is basically all my lines, but they're actually quads, you know, two triangles uh, and a brightness. And then I do this draw vectors pass. And this basically does the line rendering to this texture. But this is a texture that never gets cleared. And I basically have a double buffer and I swap and I darken um, the this texture to, towards zero to kind of simulate the phosphor fading out. So think of it as a texture that never gets cleared and is uh, using a fragment shader, it gets darkened down to zero. And I do that for pretty much every pixel on it. So there's that. There's, that's a darkened texture pass you see here. Um, and then after that, when I blur, I do the same thing. I create the same quad vertex array, so the, all those line, all the information about those lines and the, the brightness, but for a different scale. Once again, I draw to another texture, and I darken that one as well. And then I do my glow, and the glow is two different draw calls: one to do like a horizontal Gaussian blur and a vertical Gaussian blur. Um, and then after that, I have this. This probably I can skip it, but my combined vectors and globe. No, sorry, I have to do that. And here I combine the, the vector lines with the glow one, the glow texture. And then finally I do this. This is stuff that I could totally do better. Where I scale um, this output texture to fit correctly into the, into the screen as a ratio of the overlay. And then I present. So there's there's quite a lot of work going on in there, especially with blur. And I'm sure I can I can optimize this. And so you ask me when I draw one large quad, that is what I do for things like the darkened texture, the glow pass draws a single quad. Because every time I'm just taking a texture and you know sending it to uh, to the shader, I'm I'm drawing one quad that represents the whole texture in the target, right? So you end up seeing that here. Um, let's see, like draw full screen quad. So th these are the UVs for the texture, and um, where am I? Where's my quad here? make clip, squ clip space quad here. So there's there's my six coordinates for the quad. So yeah. So you see like 
even yeah the darkened texture path is also pretty expensive so i got the draw vectors at 189 samples the darkened texture pass is at 136 my glow and direction which is called twice but anyways is 81 uh, samples so quite a lot of time is being spent in any in, in these so let's say this is the one for draw darkened texture and interestingly 68 samples on the clear it's kind of interesting isn't it What am I doing here? Dark and texture pass. Let me see. I don't see why I need to clear this one. That's that's kind of interesting. Cuz I'm going to be copying it completely. Dark and texture frag. Let me see here. Vectors texture. I think I have a, a mismatched name here, but it, it's able to bind it somehow because it's the, I guess it's the first texture uniform and only one, so it, even, it binds it even though the name is wrong, could that be? Because I don't have a, a vectorous texture, do I? Combined vectors and glow called vectors texture, but I messed this up in the other one. Yeah, I guess it doesn't matter, but I should fix it. Darken texture. So this really should be vectors texture. All right. So, anyways, that's the input one. So that's the input. We put that in here and we sample it. We darken it and then we just write it out completely. So this gel clear is actually taking cycles, which is kind of surprising. thing for combined vectors and glow. Let's go up here. Glow. Clone 
direction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's 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 very possible. And maybe I don't have enough samples here. I only have like six seconds. Let me try it one more time with a bit better profile. I'm finding the GL clear showing up there to be a little bit strange. But you know, it's true that my video card is old, right? But I kind of feel like, you know, this kind of emulator should totally run on an old video card and, and not that slowly, you know? So this looks about the same. Yeah, so check it out. Still a lot of a lot on this clear here. And then if we go back up, scale texture pass, another clear. Yeah, so all, all of this tells me that if, if we go, I think if we just reduce the number of vertices we send down, we will uh, improve performance. And it's also showing me that maybe we don't need to clear all these buffers we're clearing. I gotta think about that. Definitely I know for my darkened texture pass, I don't need to because we're just overriding the other, the target texture completely as we darken, so. I don't know why I cleared it. Same thing here, combine vectors and glow. Scale. Scale I might need to, do I need to clear the target? Maybe. Especially if it's scaling down, right? These two I'm pretty sure I don't need. Let me just see what happens. They are GPU textures. What well, I mean, what do you mean by that? Which buffers are you referring to, Lisp Gamer? Wow. So I'm, I'm doing about 100, 102 FPS here. And then I remove those two clear calls and we're doing 125. Okay, hold on, I'll show you. How I create the textures. Amazing. Well, what do you know? GL clear, eh? I guess it's a blocking call or something. 
I think this other clear render to screen. Oh, do I need to do this? So this one here, I think I do because if I change the scale, it's gonna look kind of wonky. But then again, if I don't change the scale, it should be fine. You don't think it might be the clear? I was sure that by doing this I would see what am I doing to that to that output texture? So if you want to see how I how I create my textures. I gen texture like this. And then, let's see here. I bind it. I do a pixel store UI. I set the unpack alignment on it. Text image 2D. Yeah, and then basically the date, the the deal is when I create them, I pass in, for example, an RGB or RGB 32F. So I do have th like 32F buffers. That's one thing. Um, and, and the reason for that is for the darkening because I was getting quantization when I was not using 32-bit floating values. The 32-bit buffers, yeah. Possibly. And I mean, it's possible I don't need it all the way down. I can probably get away with this here and just use it for the vector textures. Let me see. I'm not sure I need it for the glow or for the that temporary buffer. Oh, 140 FPS. But I don't know if that comes from this or from the the clear that I removed. Let me see. Okay, I'm at 133, 135. So it did give me something. Definitely easier for my video card anyway. I know, man. I know. Open gel, it's a big black box, right? And you're really at the mercy of the drivers and the video cards and, and the, imp the implementation. That's pretty good though. That gives a nice savings, and I don't think it shows in, in the uh, in the output. buffer clear here not that I think it makes a difference but I don't think even think I have a depth buffer so I don't think it'll make any difference at all yeah I know not really any difference and I mean do I even need to clear my output buffer probably not let me take a look But maybe I do. Uh, 
Yeah, it doesn't really make a difference at this, this stage. Let's do another profile. All right, Lisp Gamer, thanks for hanging out. See you on Wednesday. I need more water. <laughs> I must say this uh, the profiler in Visual Studio is quite good. The built-in one, I think they added in 2015. It's really nice. I like the coloring and the code and all that. It's really it's pretty uh, pretty useful. Okay, so still spending a lot of time. Set frame buffer texture. Set viewports. Why is this so slow setting the viewport? See, it's 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 mind-boggling. GL viewport is actually slow. like two things mixed up in there. nothing to do with it's not even be interesting here I'm not really getting an answer, but it does look like it's slow. So one thing I wonder is, uh, hmm. I suppose I do need to set it. Even the set frame buffer is quite slow. setting the frame buffer texture.
darken. Okay, so now we're being pretty much dwarfed by the draw full screen quad, at least in darken. There's still the set frame buffer here. The viewport seems okay. Let's darken in glow and direction. What does this one look like? Yeah, most of it is in draw full screen quad. And in there, it's again, it's setting the vertex buffer data and set again here. And then the big draw call. It's taking most of the samples. So that's really the winner right there. And all this is telling me is that I really, I think if I just send less data, the draw call will just gets, get faster. Simple as that. Okay, so now I'm in, what am I looking at here? Ah, oh, so it's just draw full screen quad. Okay, that's called by all the other ones. So exclusive samples, yeah, screen update. That's interesting, inclusive samples. Backtrack C frame update, debugger, render scene, draw full screen quad. So really that's, that's our big winner right there. 17% spent in there of the frame. 32% is just rendering the scene. So draw full screen quad, if we if we optimize that one, we should be in pretty good, sh good shape. Draw full screen quad here. Show in it's this big draw call. Okay, so I'm pretty convinced that uh, we should see some savings next time if we do this send index buffer here. So let's move this to the top. And I'm gonna stop the stream and on Wednesday, I'll, uh, I'll tackle this uh, sending the index, index buffer. And we'll see how that, how that turns out. So yeah, guys, thanks for watching and uh, see you in a couple days.